Good evening, comrade subscribers. So, I'm back home from Melbourne. Um, on my second channel, I uh, not normally the drive home is pretty boring. It's motorway, 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 because everything, all the interesting places have been bypassed. But I, just, I stopped at my brother's place in Canberra uh, last night. And um, instead of just driving around Hume Highway into Canberra, I thought I'd go cross country, uh, like take the back roads and uh, visit a, a, a small distillery in a place called Wee Jasper. So I, um, so I did that. Uh, it's quite interesting. <laughs> so uh, some of it actually isn't on Google Street View. Um, if you go to have a look, it's they, they kind of drove and then stopped. <laughs> Fair enough. So that's, that's interesting. Um, but then, uh, yeah, so some of it's paved, then it's dirt gravel, and then it becomes mud. <laughs> which is interesting in my Mazda 6, but I made it through uh, and went to the distillery. So I think the whole video is just over two hours long. Uh, I'm not recommending you just sit there on your computer and watch it or you know, iPad or whatever. Um, but I like to um, I like to think, um, you know, streaming it on a large screen TV in 4K and, I don't know, turn the volume down, put some music on, and you can pretend you're uh, driving through the bush in Australia for two hours. Um, maybe that interests you, I don't know. Anyway, I'll put a link if I can. Otherwise, it'll be in the video description. Anyway, so being away for two weeks, a few packages arrived, including uh, this fellow from Hawaii, I believe. So you can see it's uh, Sinclair ZX81 with a modified keyboard and some... Uh, uh, extra feet and this expansion on the back unfortunately I don't know what they did but it came separate it was um, separate in the in the box so you can see here that actually they've got they've actually used this part here to if I push it back in to actually hold it steady you know this this little bit here so I thought that was quite quite clever. Um, yeah, this this part here, they've actually used this to to stabilise that. Uh, I don't know if it works. Um, obviously, it's it's the it's UHF out, so I can't really check it straight away. I'd have to convert it first. Although uh, I guess I could. Uh, no, no. Anyway, we'll, we'll see. Uh, it's only going to be a quick video tonight, I think, just to just to show uh, what it is, because uh, I'm pretty tired. Uh, but one other interesting thing, I didn't pick this up. Someone uh, picked this up, I think, on the uh, TS2068 Discord. Um, so you can see here we've got a, it's a stamped Sinclair ZX81. But the modulator is in the TS1000 position. You can see there is actually a, a um, you can actually see that there is kind of molding or a cutout for that so i don't know see but there isn't on the on the bottom half so i don't know and and the tv that's you know it, it's stamped in the ts1000 position so i don't know maybe um a kit maybe this is how the kit zx81s came so if you look at it at an actual zx81 you can see we've got you can see the the i never noticed that before but you can see actually the, where you can cut out the TS-1000. So, so I don't know what's happened with this one. So it's it's interesting because it doesn't look like it's been filled in. It looks like, unless, well, I'll pull it apart and find it out, find out. But um, I thought that was quite interesting. A, a ZX-81 with a TS-1000 modulator location. You see the TS-1000 doesn't even have that mark there. So unless this is an, uh, a newer case molding and you can see it's got actually TV printed there. So it's not like it's got TV printed there and then they've cut this out, you know, the TV's printed there and they've cut this out and filled that in. So that is interesting. Um, no doubt there is some history about that. So it'd be interesting. I, I don't know what it is, um, but that would be interesting. If anyone has any ideas about that. Um, yeah. And of course, obviously it's got this, custom keyboard that's been very, very lovingly made um, it feels almost Soviet <laughs> uh, some of the Soviet keyboards I've got 
Um, unfortunately, I don't know, I'm going to have to double check, but unfortunately, one of the rubber feet, it looks like, um, has disappeared. But with that rubber foot in place, it's, um, it basically is, is perfectly balanced. So, yeah, well, let's, um, I guess let's, let's pull it apart. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, so this is a 16K RAM expansion. Uh, there's, uh, what, eight 2K uh, DRAMs. I don't know what this is. I can see on the bottom here, all this beautiful wire wrapping, that it is connected. So we've got four connections going to the top of this. Well, I guess maybe that's just users. Yeah, and then it's wire wrapped off somewhere else. So I, I don't know, unless it's some sort of, maybe it's maybe it's a built-in composite out, perhaps. I don't know, was there video out on the ZX? I know there's, vid there's video out on the Spectrum one, isn't there? Um, I like how they've... I don't know, unfortunately, I think this is from an estate, so unfortunately I don't know much of the history, but it's very, very lovingly made, I, th I think, you know, it's very well done, I'm, I'm really impressed by, especially all the wire wrap, so I'm going to be very careful when I, when I open it up, because obviously, you know, we can, we can do 32k RAM in, inside much easier these days, um, but I think it's, it's quite important to keep, keep this as it is. Um... Yeah, so I'm starting to ramble, but yeah, just like wow, this is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to try, try and glue glue this back on. So this is just okay. This is just peeling off. Um, yeah, it looks like it was just glued in the first place. So I don't think it was really broken as such. Um, I don't know, araldite or some sort of plastic to plastic. I'll I'll have a look. But let's. Um, oh, Phillips head. Uh, what Philip said, flathead. All right, let me get some screwdrivers and start opening this up, and we'll have a little peek to see what's going on inside. Okay, screws came out pretty easily, so obviously, yeah, which is which isn't a surprise. Apart from that one. Um, what do we got? Okay, so yeah, it's definitely a TS one thousand. You can tell by the, you can tell by the um, FCC strap. Um, just trying to think, anything else obvious? So you can see, oh yeah, a bit of bit of work has been done for the keyboard. So I'll. See if I can very carefully open that up, but um, yep. So that's that's definitely that's definitely. So unless they initially brought in ZX eighty ones and then later on, they were Timex Sinclair made TS TS one thousands or something, but that's definitely hasn't been kind of patched in as far as I can tell. So it's definitely a kind of like a. A US, and that looks professionally, well, it looks like molded, really. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't look like it's been cut out. Interesting. So there's obviously, as I say, for me, this is the first time I've, I've seen one like this. Um, I've never seen one like this before, so I'm not an expert. As I keep trying, reminding everyone, I don't claim to be an expert. I'm happy to be corrected. Um, I do do research. So I try to give accurate information. Um, I do know one or two things. But I don't know everything. So look at that. That's much better. Nice ribbon cable. <laughs> so pretty standard. So 2C184. So it's an older ULA. NEC, it's got the old, so I assume that's a 2K ceramic RAM, but yeah, pretty, pretty standard resistors that I don't really like vertically. Um, 
Yeah. So what is it? So it's an issue ZX81 USA. Uh, well, these are issue one boards, aren't they? Yeah. Issue one. So with um. So what I'll probably do is, I'll probably might, might try and. Oh, sorry. You can just all you can see is my hand. I might try and tidy this up a bit. Um, but keep the original intention in place. Um, okay. So how's that board? Okay, so it looks like the, the keyboard's on, what, double-sided tape or something? Is there any compression there? I reckon it could be double-sided tape, yeah. And they've done a very neat little socket there, so you can actually gently, sorry, gently disconnect it. If I can, might need something a little sharper to go in there. There we go. There we go. So very neat, very neatly done. Very impressed. It's quite a good job. So that's all your keyboard. Um, so I think that's how Apple did their keyboard as well, wasn't it? It was basically a, a, a dip socket and then a ribbon cable plugged into it. From what I recall, I did uh, year 10, I did um, work experience at an Apple slash Mac reseller in Brisbane um, in the technical support. And that was one of, one of the tricks they showed me was using a screwdriver to lever up the, uh, the keyboard connectors. Yes, anyway. All right, so pretty standard ZX81, apart from that little um, customization there. Um, the, the case fascinates me because I've never seen one like that. Um, no doubt someone has, so I, if you know the history, uh, by all means, please tell me. Um, I don't think there's anything I can really do to improve the... See, I'll see if I can give it a bit of a clean just get the dust off and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, so I'll just do a, I'll do a composite mod, then hopefully, I assume it'll work. Um, they're pretty robust boards, aren't they? If the ULA doesn't work, I've got um, some of Charlie's VLA81s. If the ROM, ROM doesn't work, I'll stick a new ROM in. If the, well, the RAM, I don't have, anyway, whatever. Uh, so this one I'll, I'll pull apart as well. Um, just to figure out what <laughs> what that's for. Unfortunately, this is all that there was no documentation, no software, so I don't know if they uh, use this for something. I don't know. Well, maybe uh, maybe this was um, uh, for the cassette. Maybe maybe that's read write for the cassette. <sighs> um, so probably what I could try and do is because you, you can see, I don't know, without pulling it apart. You can see the wires go to to this one here, but then that's I think just to hold hold them, and then they go off somewhere else, and then to somewhere else, and then we've got some some uh, passives there, and then they go somewhere else. Um, yeah, but so let me zoom out a bit. But yeah, overall I think this is a really really well made expansion, and using that. Um, Using that stabilizer, which is what I guess Sinclair should have done, <laughs> like that. Yeah, very cool. Um, so I should be able to open it up. I should be able to open it up pretty safely. Um, so it looks like yeah, we've got re resistors, capacitors, um, and some logic. So like I said, we've got 
um, MCM4116, so this is all 2K. DRAM, uh, 74 LS393, a 157, 167, 27, 232, uh, anyway, whatever. But yeah, this, this is, it looks like, so, I don't, so yeah, I don't even know what type of socket that is. But it looks like something that you push in and then turn. Actually, you could probably... I've got it upside down. Uh, sorry if I can... You're trying to read it and I'm just moving it all around everywhere. Uh, burned, okay. So it's an M... Well, I'm reading this through the... So it's an MS3... 112E... 8-4P... Plug, maybe? Burndy. Anyway. So, yeah. The, um, I'm waffling again. Try and buzz it out so you can see it go. Oh, it gets a bit complex. Well, I started with the company that I work with just after they <laughs> um, did away with wire wrapping, <laughs> so I never had to do worry about any of it. Yeah, all right. Well, that's that was it for tonight, really. I'm just I've got a few other things, I've got that. Um, that Micro Palm PC5000 has arrived. Um, so that'll be interesting to pull apart. But um, yeah, hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that was interesting for you. So um, yeah. Sorry, waffle, waffle. Get back into the routine. Bye for now.